Good evening, Tarotao Collective, or good afternoon, or good morning, I don't know from where are you watching this video. Um, today, there was like a type, I really felt the Mercury retrograde energies. It was like I was going forward, I was with all this um energy and aptitude and all of the sudden I started thinking about my finances about my life mission about maybe I should give up and go through another route and it took me a long time to realize that that was not my energy is it was the Mercury retrograde energy because sometimes we want to attribute this to other people's projections on us. And actually we need to understand that once we become a part of the universe, a part of the all, um, stronger forces can influence on us and that those are the planets, the portals, the stars, the moon. At least these are the most approximate um, huge force beings that directly influence in us. So today, I hope you're safe. I hope you have had some grounding time. I hope and I wish that this message finds you well and that at least you have just a little bit your the door of your heart open to listen to this message. I said on the previous video that I was going to continue speaking about some astrological movements that are really influencing us in this month of December 2023. So on December 6th of this month, Neptune went direct. As you know, Neptune rules the sign of Pisces, so therefore is a lot of dreams, a lot of illusions, a lot of deep, deep, deep heart desires, okay, involved. With Neptune direct and Mercury in retrograde, there is a point of a reality check. And this is still going on. This is not just one day and then the next is not. It is. So many of you were receiving strong electric <laughs> discharges of creativity in terms of healing, intuition, light worker activity, rituals, instant sage, cleansing. And with the retrograde of, Mer of Mercury, with that reality check energy in conjunction I'm so sorry, and Neptune going direct, there is a strong desire of going beyond the illusion. Very interesting. Giving us a different type of clarity. How interesting. This is not something that... Um, we're used to having words to express it because in the fifth dimensional mindset, there are barely words said. It's actually more a telepathic communication. And I, I really feel it because it, it is hard for me compared to be to maybe last year or maybe six months ago 
I am really, really, really channeling strictly what comes through, comes through. I really have to meditate, sage, really put a harmonic frequency in order for me to do this. So let's continue. On December 9 of this year, the year of the chariot, Venus was in front of Jupiter. Venus was in Scorpio, Jupiter in Taurus, creating an energy bridge. It was fantastic, fantastic energy combination. Okay, it was grounding what we think and believe about love, bringing us comfortability. Next, I think I spoke about this. The 1212 portal, extremely important. Conscience, transcendence through cosmic energy, huge ascension. All this is affecting you, impacting your life. So it's very important to know the forecast of these huge bodies because we're going to have to take all of this in consideration from now on. Instead of knowing if it's going to rain or not, we are going to really start tapping into the astrology which it has been done, but now it's, it's like for real. Remember 12 zodiacs, 12 months, 12 is also a number of divine endings. It also means illumination, awareness, having a panoramic view of the situation, the Omega, Conclusions. There was a new moon on Sagittarius on the portal with the Mercury retrograde. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go faster. That new moon on Sagittarius was a bringing us a better channeling experience in aligning you to your warrior path. So I can just understand the confusion of energies that must be going through your heart and mind these days. It's like you're here, but this is pulling you back. But just know for you, the sake of your mind that yes, we're going to go through this for a little while, but it's important because there's getting out of our egocentrism. We're all one. So in order for things to be materially manifested is not all because you manifested it. You need to have the collaboration of these huge beings, planets, portals, in a complete alignment of the galaxy. And this is happening. That's the good news. Okay. So this Mercury retrograde calls us to take our time to be aware of every word we speak and manage life in a calm, composed way. So in a way, the hermit mode continues. You need it from time to time. But tomorrow, the 21st is the solstice, the winter solstice for us. And it's in Capricorn. 
there is a huge celebration of the light. You are light, so let the world see you. I channeled this while I was writing it. So the sun is going to be in Capricorn. Um, I wrote here, nature walks will help you. Harmony, Capricorn is bringing us harmony. In life, important matters. So it's like tomorrow is the real, is, is your real <laughs> celebration. It's your real holiday. Also, Venus will be in Scorpio, aligning with Uranus in an eclectic creativity energy. Magnificent. It's a super healing and grounding. Innovative ideas, problem solving. Can't wait. On the 22nd of December, the sun will be aligning with that Mercury in retrograde. Very interesting. Be on the expectation that you are aware in that things are going to pop up because the moon is in half. It's a half moon, half full moon. So, the moon today is in Aries. So let's talk about today. Tomorrow we talk about tomorrow. A lot of things are, I think, very internal things are popping up again. And we're like, where, when is my recovery going to end? I feel like I'm in recovery for the rest of my life. Well, take it as it is. It is. This is your life now, and you are in recovery. Progressive recovery. So that's the good news. So let's start with this huge zodiac to see what messages it wants to bring us. I was Shuffling and playing with the heavenly bodies, heavenly bodies astrology in Oracle. And the first card was the 10th house. And look at your sacred heart there in a pendulum with that perspective, that wider perspective of the uh, owl. Also, the card says, Structure, discipline, life mission, accomplishment, and career. So I know that the structure you're having, analysis and the discipline that you're applying, your life mission, what have you accomplished and want to accomplish, and what you want to dedicate your life to, how you want to live your life, how you want to serve this humanity, it's all on your mind. So that's a lot. And I'm here to validate you like always, to tell you that I do understand, to motivate you to hold on, to stay strong, that it's okay it's okay, all these feelings that you're having and all these emerging thoughts. That is not you, that is not anyone else, is that there's something going on bigger than you at this moment that you affect and it affects you. The 10th house of the zodiac. Then the next card we have is the five, house five. The bird is singing over a pure sacred heart. This is you, light worker. It says passion, play, children, 
confidence, and creativity. And we were speaking about that. This is the time. How are you going to hold on? You're going to hold on by aligning frequencies. This means that instead of your regular routine day, you're going to spend more time in purpose intentionally listening to music, going out to play, play with your cards, play with your oracle, doing all that beautiful craft that you love to do. With the heart, with the pure heart of a child, because of the children is the kingdom. And you are that child. Practicing what you love to do is going to give you confidence in, your, in the purpose of your life and is going to amplify strongly your creativity. Let's continue. We have the sign of Virgo. Angel wings from above, looking already manifesting the flowers of the seed that you have planted. And these are roses. These are beautiful, beautiful flowers that have thorns on it. So that means that it's not for you to create a wall around you, but there has to be a balance between the shadow and the light. And it's using that energy that maybe caused traumas on yourself to now be aware and ready in case someone wants to grab it without your permission. And it says integrity, reverence to yourself and service. You are not here choosing parties or the light or the dark or you know exactly what I mean or the good and the bad. You are the transmuter. You are the Holy Grail. You are the one that can choose how you're going to channel those energies. And just being your authentic self is a huge service to the universe. Because we're living in such a fake illusion that when people Beings of all kinds, animals, plants, whatever. When they see authenticity in an individual expressing genuine charisma, you are show you are a showstopper. I hope. You get this. So the attention that you have been hiding yourself from, be ready to face it. Face your book. I'm getting the fourth directions. And then we have the third house, house three. The community. The integration, the conversation about your dreams with people that want the best for you. Sometimes you don't have who to speak to, but speak to yourself. Early learning, childhood relations, the rational mind. And communication. I'm getting very strongly here that we're going to have to 
unlearn everything that has been indoctrinated to us without our consent. It's very hard to unlearn and remain in a childhood mindset with the demands of this world. I'm not asking you to do that, but I am, yes, motivating you to take a time of your day, a time of your week, to remember who you really were, to tap into your inner child and take it out to play. Communicate, communicate with yourself because this is gonna, going to break the hermit mode. Okay, it's, it's very important. It's time to get out of the cave and go to the valley. So I'm going to pull now the witch's tarot to see what messages it has for us in regards of your situation, okay? So please exercise your discernment, intuition, and apply it to your particular situation in matter, okay? Holy Spirit, talk to me. Tell me what the Tarot Tao Collective needs to know tonight, at this time. You won't believe it. So we have the Hermit in reverse. Start preparing yourself to get out of the cave and into the valley. I don't even think there's a preparation. I think this should be an expectation because it's going to happen. This is your first card, the, your first card, the hermit in reverse. Time to get out of the cave. It's going to happen. The second card we have as we cut the deck. Time for your emperor energy. Time to be the leader of yourself. Time to be the leader of the circumstances and energies around you. Learning how to say no. Learning how to say this is my limit learning how to retreat to save a huge collective and always moving forward in victory for your people. The emperor embodies the divine masculine energy and the king of wands, the king of swords, the king of pentacles, the high priest, and the king of cups it's a person is an individual is an energy let's say it's a collective it's an energy that masters the elements it is what the magician became to have victory on this life watching the offspring, watching everybody play like a child because they're safe with the emperor. So let's recap. The hermit in reverse 
out of the cave to the valley to really embody your true royal nature. And in the bottom of the deck, we have the lovers. You deserve partnership. You deserve that the world gives you your reward. I am getting right now, thank you for your service. Thank you for surviving. Thank you for choosing recovery in life. Thank you for your healing because of that, now I am able to love. This is amazing. This children playing with the water and the emperor watching and then this lovers really brings me a beautiful energy. I hope to you too. So let's see what messages does the monology. I don't know if I forgot or not, but, but the moon is on Aries right now, today. Yes, I did set it. Tomorrow we're going to continue with the astro astrological little forecast. And tomorrow I hope you celebrate. But let's see what the universe, what the moon wants to tell us. What advice does it have for us today? I already saw one card. How weird. The first card we have is <laughs> last quarter moon in Aries. Work through your feelings. So you're doing awesome. If nobody has told you today, you that are in a hermit mode still, that you are doing awesome, that you are being watched, seen, recognized, and acknowledged. Here it is. You're doing great even if the world tells you you're not. Because remember, what is in the world is completely opposite to the kingdom realms of heaven. We have New moon in Scorpio. This is reminding me a lot about the ring eclipse that we had in Scorpio. Oof. Go deeper. So release and purge was left. Release and purge until it's no longer trouble. You can continuously release without effort and without self-sabotage. Go deeper and see what is hindering you, what is resisting in your emotions. Go deeper. So work through your feelings, go deeper, Ready? So a card here. So 
So we have one last quarter moon and two new moons. New moon in Capricorn. New moon. We were talking about this. New moon in Capricorn. A lot of heart chakra activation. Step up and lead with that empress, emperor energy. An empress, emperor energy, okay? The message is very clear. Again, last quarter moon in Aries. Work through your feelings. New mo moon in Scorpio. Go deeper. Don't be afraid of the release. New moon in Capricorn. Step up and lead. I am so proud of you for listening to this message. Believe me, these messages are also for me as a part of the collective of Tarot Tao. And I, I know how difficult and challenging this could be. I go through the same waves of emotion that you go through. And I want to tell you that you're not alone. And... I want us now together to take a deep breath. Locking in this powerful energy. I forgot to tell you, like always, today I have a heart chakra incense burning, sage burning, and my neck champa incense. And I meditated with this green aventurine that is helping me in this journey. Let's clear the energy with the Tibetan bowl. Namaste. I love you. You know I do. See you soon. Thank you. Stay strong.